Hmm, what do I want to order today? A barista can only make the perfect coffee, but only if someone orders. And that's the client's role. They ask and the server responds. Hi, I'm Ian and I'm a cloud advocate here at Microsoft. And I really love this part because once you grasp the client side, you see how developers, not just systems, drive the interaction. Clients are where user needs get translated into actual requests. And that's what makes client-server architectures so powerful. Joining me today are Sandra and Bruno, who are a powerful team. They're going to be showing us how MCP clients work, how they make the requests that bring everything to life. Guys, take it away. Thanks, Ian. Welcome. So, Bruno, last episode, we just created an MCP server. Now I would love to see how I can use this MCP server as a developer losing, for instance, VS Code with its GitHub Copilot integration. And then afterwards, why don't we also create a client as a Java developer? I would love to see this using Langchain for J. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we we did implement a server that lists uh, speeches of monkeys, and we can we can access this tool in different ways. We can use uh, we can use the inspector for MCP, which is this project here, model context protocol slash inspector in npm. This gives us a very easy way to test. This is an MCP client at the end of the day, and it's good for testing an MCP server. So I put the URL here of my MCP server. I hit connect. I can list the MCP tools available on this server, and I can trigger them. So here I'm going to trigger the list monkey species, and I can run this tool. I got a list of 11 total species. I can make other calls like get uh, random species. It just returns one and all the data. But this is just an inspector tool. I, I, what I really want is to get this MCP server available in, a, in an environment that is actually useful as part of my flow when interacting with AI. So what we're going to do is configure this MCP server uh, on Visual Studio Code, and then we're going to implement an actual Java application that uses this MCP client as part of an agentic flow. If you are curious about how to do these things, it's all part of the repo Let's Learn MCP Java on, on GitHub, um, on the Microsoft organization. So let's look into Visual Studio Code first. When I when I ask Visual Studio Code, let's use the ask mode. And we're gonna we're gonna use the ask mode for give me uh, uh, three species of monkeys. And Right now, it doesn't have the, that MCP server configured as, a, as an MCP server on, on this environment. So it came up with these options here, uh, resource, capuchin, and howler. Now, these are probably coming from the training model of uh, Sony 4, which is the model that I used for this interaction. So let's add the actual MCP server that he created for species. And let's go to here, add a server. And we're going to do localhost 8080 MCP SSE. Yes. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, that yeah. was correct. All right. Monkey species MCP server. And um, let's available on this workspace only. Mm -hmm. And let's trust this MCP server. All right. So now we have. In this workspace, in this project here, which is the it, which is the MCP client project, I'm also configuring the the server as an MCP server for these Visual Studio Code environment, and it already found four tools as we can see here. So we can show the output. Let's see if the output shows something. Uh, this is the login of the Visual Studio Code client connecting to that server. Okay, so now let's go here and. Let's ask Sone MCP resource. Oh, not MCP resources. Let's just, let's just ask the question again. Give me uh, three species of monkeys. Let's see if it let's see if it will connect to the MCP server. It did not. It did not because it's not in agentic mode. 
let's put in agentic mode. And let's make sure it's using the MCP server for monkeys. And let's click OK. Now I, I did select, I mean, all of the MCP servers in my environment were selected. I, I deselect all of them and I only selected this one because I don't want the LLM go trigger all the other MCP servers. Cool. So now I'll get you three monkey species using the available tools to provide you with accurate information. Let's say it's a it's an MCP server with accurate data, not just random training models. And um, and then let's allow the execution. So it did run uh, it did run list monkey species, and it found one species here, Spidey monkey. And let's get the details for these species. And let's get the details for this one and for this one. So you got details for three species. There you go. So you have the spider monkey, you have the Japanese macaque, and you have Pro proboscis monkey. Great. These are actually coming from the MCP server that we implemented before, uh, as we can see uh, in the source code, which oh, we'll skip that part. You can go back to the video and watch again. Now, what if I want to implement an application that actually uh, uh, integrates with the MCP server as well? So we have this code here that we already wrote. And it's a, it's a, an application using Langchain4j. And it has a chat model. Uh, it has a system message. You have this chat interaction with, with, the, uh, um, with the application. We have an OpenAI key, but you're going to actually use the local lang large language model Olama for this example. We have Olama up and running. We're going to have an e-memory chat memory store. And we're going to have tools. So for the tools, you're going to use the MCP server that we configured, that we implemented. It's up and running. And here's the mcp.json file configured. We're going to use this MCP JSON file for this Java application. So when we run this application, what we are doing here is combining implementation of a chat service with a provider and with a model. The chat service, here we add in this AI services builder, we have a bot, which is a chat bot. We're going to use a chat model, which is going to be a llama. And we're going to use a tool provider. This tool provider is the MCP tool provider that has the MCP server we configured. So let's just run this code and see how it works. So let's create a new terminal and call Java minus jar. And you see I passed the argument here, chat. So now I'm in chat mode in this Java terminal application. And I can say something how, like, what monkey species do you know? Or give me three species of monkey, the same prompt that we gave Visual Studio Code. Let's go with that. All right, so it returned spider monkey, howler monkey, and Japanese macaque. So three species different than two, uh, in a different order than the one Give me fictitious species. And these ones are fake coming from the server. Volcanic Amber Monkey. Uh, give me all species you have. Let's see if it will list all of them. There you go. 11 species, as we saw in the beginning. All of them coming from the MCP survey. So it's not using its large language model training data set behind the scenes is just using the information coming from the MCP server. So this client, we have Visual Studio Code as a client, and we have a Java application as a client, as an MCP client for that MCP server. And you can configure other tools like Cloud Desktop or GitHub Copilot CLI that just got released, um, and um, um, Cloud Codex. All these agentic AI CLIs can, now, can also connect to MCP servers as long as you have this configuration. So go have fun. Sandra, is the, is, I, I know monkey species is not the best example, but I mean, it That's shows. the best example. That's you know, example? with Olama, you can totally run it locally, but when you also want pictures, because I would love to see pictures here, we can just switch to Azure OpenAI and with Langchain4j, it's a quick win. It's going to be the same code, just you, as Bruno pointed out, you just give it the secrets and the key and then it will work. Awesome. So thank you, Sandra. Thank you for uh, folks watching and uh, have a great day.
Thank you so much, Bruno and Sandra, for this amazing session. The only thing better than one cloud advocate is two, and we had both of you today to lead us on this amazing journey. For those of you who followed along or would like to learn more, you can find resources at aka.ms forward slash Java and AI for beginners. Link is also in the description of this video. We hope you stick around and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.